Parevtsas, um, good uh, afternoon. It's a pleasure for me to be here and I want to express my thanks first of all on behalf of uh, UCLA for providing the framework of, for this lecture and also for the Gulbenkian Foundation for providing me with the assistance to be physically here in uh, Los Angeles to discuss my um, current dissertation on uh, Banpit list between Western Armenia and Northern Kurdistan. Um, as you see here, the header I chose for my presentation is um, from an art exhibition in the metro station in Yerida Zagan. For those who have been to Yerevan, you might be familiar, one of the central metro stations. And I found it telling, uh, quite telling for my uh, presentation as it links together aspects of the past and the present. So we have like, of course, Arad as the symbol of Exodus, enforced Exodus during the Armenian Genocide in 1915, but at the same time the barbed wire fences on top of Arad indicating the current close border between Armenia and Turkey, which also has important ramifications and when we look how memory is reconstructed both in the region from which Armenians were expelled and Syriacs and Yazidis and um, in Armenia where a lot of these people are currently residing. Um, my research is more complex as, uh, and would definitely not fit into the uh, framework of 20 minutes. So uh, where I'm going to take you will be part 5 and 6 technically, of my research, where I will tell you more about the field work I uh, conducted in both Armenia and uh, the Lake Van region. Mm. And hereby uh, I deal a lot with like, how memory is constructed by different groups in this um, region. So um, here is just a short overview. Uh, I had like to have the spatial containment of the field and determination of research cohorts, which means actually that I had to find a region I was uh, most interested in from the whole like vast uh, region of where Armenians resided in the Ottoman period. I chose Van, um, I made my decision in favor of Van for a particular reason. Uh, Van was one of the regions with the highest Armenian um, populations in the pre genocide period and is nowadays also is located within the framework of like. Um, national Turkey, but at the same time has now a majority Kurdish population, so it's like a threefold <laughs> contested area. Um, with what I mean with uh, the extended Lake Van region, uh, I actually basically refer to the old, like from a historical point of view, the Bitlis and Van Vilayetze, which is now, I, I think, uh, uh, as you can see, it totally encompasses both the eastern and western shores of Lake Van, and they form a better like actually framework than nowadays provinces because nowadays, as you see, Bitlis Vilayeti refers nowadays to uh, Bitlis, Mush, parts of Batman, in particular what uh, important from the Armenian point of view, but, uh, the Sasun area, and parts of Sikhet or Sirt nowadays, uh, whereas Van Vilayeti refers basically to proper Van, and the region of Hakkari, although I will probably due to the physical uh, distance from the Lake Van region, not include Hakkari in my research, uh, but it had been part of the Ottoman like province of Van. So, um, as I just um, already hinted at, uh, what was interesting and also instrumental in choosing this particular um, region uh, for my fieldwork was that it has been like in what was perceived I uh, until the genocide as a very integral part of uh, the Armenian provinces and also was envisaged by Armenian nationalists as like the center of a future independent Ar Turkish Armenia or Armenian Hayasta. Um, and here um, the people I'm interested in, like the ancestors I met were of course Armenians residing in the Lake Van region, but also Yazidis and to a lesser extent also Syriacs. Syriacs are of course more relevant in the region of Hakkari, yet there were also uh, uh, settlements of Syriacs in the uh, vicinity of the urban van in villages like uh, Gandalova, Katalava, and nowadays it's called Gandalova, one of the very few villages which almost retained their names. And for the Yezidis, in particular the region of uh, uh, between Lake Van uh, and onto the Iranian border, so between Van and Sarai, are very, which are called Deshte Abache, like the field of Abach, is very uh, important in that regard. Then, of course, uh, nowadays the region is part, as we all know, uh, of uh, the Turkish nation state, but uh, of course, with the emergence of the Kurdish uh, national movement, the PKK movement, uh, from the end of the 80s, it has been more and more contested as a Turkish um, national um, territory. 
but instead envisaged as part of a new northern Kurdish territory, in particular as part of Serhat, like um, there are different regions of this imagined new Kurdistan, and this uh, corresponds as part of, uh, at the center of the Serhat Kurdish region, which comprises Bingo, Diyarbakir, Mushbitlis, Are, Batman, and Dersin. So that was actually what I just briefly mentioned here. Then these are the theoretical underpinnings. I would suggest to actually um, jump over that, but we could get back to that if you're interested in like the following discussion, because I think to conserve energy is more important right now. So um, these were like the kind of research question. Again, we can discuss this in more detail later on. What I was interested in is that um, I, I looked first at how school books of like uh, in both Armenia and Turkey uh, are plotting history, are um, plotting uh, how they kind of, um, um, how can I put it, like how they are um, showing how like uh, collective violence, acts of collective violence took place in the region. And then I will look at how different groups in the, both Armenia and, um, and Turkey which are either expelled from the region or currently residing in the region of Lake Van, are recollecting their past. And I hope to find, um, and that's also one of my main aims, I want to find actually bridging patterns of memory, uh, which can bridge actually the, Kur the narrative of Kurds in the region with that uh, of Armenians who were uh, expelled from the region. Uh, now I want to take you really into my field work and just show you what uh, I was doing in which region. I think that's maybe the most illustrative part of the research. Um, most of my research I conducted in Armenia for the plain reason that it took me longer. I, it had been my second stay in Armenia, unlike Turkey where I had been residing for a longer period, so I had needed more time to learn Armenian and to get also familiar with my research environment. These were the places where uh, most of my uh, respondents were coming from. Uh, they were not coincidental, it was just physically um, based um, on the fact that I had to go to the villages where people uh, were currently living who were expelled from the Lake Van region. In that regard, of course, Van is more complicated or more easier, depending on how you take it, because you can find Armenians from Van in virtually every part of the country. Whereas when it comes to in particular Sasun and Mush, it's getting more interesting. Um, for Sasun, it's maybe one of the few groups from um, Western Armenia, which have the most homogeneous settlements nowadays in um, Eastern Armenia, in the Republic of Armenia. And they are particularly located in the region between Yerevan, between Kotak and Aragatsotun along the Arshtarak Highway. We have got uh, different villages in my regard. In particular, Nekin Basmabed was an important um, post for my research, as well as Katnapurs, Katnapur and Tallinn as a city, as well as Ashna, um, it, which is very important because it has been one of the few sites where they had been like on a local bottom-up basis, a museum on Gevok Chavush. So it has also like important aspect or important importance in the kind of like uh, Soviet uh, Armenian history. And then Armavi region, which has been very important in particular in, with regards to Mushitsi, to Armenians from the Mush area. Mm, now this is um, a kind of reconstruction of where these people were expelled from during the genocide. So we see here, um, that um, on the eastern, uh, on the sorry, the western shore of Van, all these um, interviews refer to interviews I conducted with Armenians. Whereas in the Van region, as I've already mentioned before, I also con uh, conducted interviews with Yazidis and Syriacs who are now living nowadays living in Armenia but were expelled from this region. And uh, we see, of course, like very high numbers of people from Batman for the plain reason that Batman actually refers to the Sasun region. And um, most of the, um, my respondents from Van were identifying as being expelled from urban Van, whereas most of the people I, um, which I uh, conducted interview with in the Sasun and Mush region actually referred to several villages which I was also able to, um, to relocate on, uh, on contemporary maps and they will be included in my research as a, in the form of settlement index. So in particular um, for the reconstruction, some publications from the Turkish ministry were very important because they were the ones who changed the names of the villages, so they already also knew uh, how they were called before. There are publications from the Umumi İçişler Müdürlüğü uh, from the 60s, which in a very like uh, thorough way um, document every single village and the renaming of every single village in that region, which helped me a lot. 
by comparing this with Armenian sources to also relocate because for a lot of respondents they were not aware anymore uh, of course whether their village was still existing, what was the uh, exact current location of their village and um, how was this village called in nowadays if it was still existing. So um, that was part of my work and here we see just local distribution of participants and uh, ethnic composition. Mm, for my interviews I basically um, use Armenian as the main language. I was lucky in particular in the urban areas that I could also conduct some interviews in my mother tongue in German and some also in English but you see they are just uh, um, make up a very short, a small part of it. And um, now let's shift to the second part of my fieldwork. This was the fieldwork I conducted in the Lake Van region. Um, I, I had unfortunately only two months there because I had my main, um, so to say, my headquarter, my flat was in Yerevan and also the funding I received was for actually only research in Yerevan. So actually these two months had to be covered on my own and um, I had less time because I had to get back to Germany. So here we see like now the mapping of um, my fieldwork in Turkey here on the both sides of the shore. We will start with the um, western shore. And uh, the interesting thing is I try since I conducted the fieldwork in Armenia before, that granted me with the opportunity that if possible to ex actually exactly um, go to these villages from which the people were expelled with whom I conducted my interviews in Armenia. And that was not always possible. For example, I did not access the southern area for some security reasons because uh, it is actually as regarded as one of the most conservative areas, which was a bit difficult for my research. You have to keep in mind also the time of my research was uh, in the um, running up of the Turkish elections and most of the places where I conducted fieldwork in Turkey are now actually not accessible. Places like Varto were for a long period under curfew and uh, it has virtually turned into a conflict zone actually just after my fieldwork. So you see main focus was in Varto and Mush here and um, here the, uh, in particular the rural areas re refer to um, places where I interviewed uh, people who were nowadays living in Yezidi villages. So in this regard in particular Chubuklu is very important as uh, I think that in particular people uh, familiar with the Eastern Armenian historiography will know Jehangir Ara, which played a crucial role actually in the uh, defense um, of Armenia during the um, World War I Caucasus ex um, campaign, um, and particularly in the, in the Battle of Bash Apara. And um, this village uh, conducted a lot of interviews and um, here we see Again, the language of the interview was mainly Turkish because um, for the very plain reason that my Kurdish is not as good as my Turkish, so I interviewed most of them in um, Turkish. And um, now last not but uh, lastly, um, I want to just address what um, were the, frame, the things I was interested in. I mean, I'm now in the middle part of my research. So I was mostly interested in how they, how in both sides they remember collective violence and deportation how they understand ties of belonging and the homeland, and how they remember the other. So in the Armenian sense, of course, it refers to how they remember the Kurdish other, the Turkish other, and in the Turkish case, of course, how they remember the Armenians, Yezidis, or Syriacs. In that regard, uh, also one of part of my preliminary findings, which might be interesting, is that um, due to the fact that, um, that Armenians constitute the majority of um, like the non-Muslim uh, segments of society in that region, uh, nowadays, uh, interviews conducted in the villages, they would not, uh, they would very scarcely remember remember the existence of Yezidis and Syriacs in these villages, even though they were. It is historically confirmed that this village works, for instance, populated by Syriacs or by Yezidis. So they were actually since also like the um, Syriacs were um, organized under the umbrella of the Milet i Armeni of the Armenian um, Milet, the Armenian community. They actually, even in the villages where uh, we can be absolutely sure that no Armenians resided, they would always refer to like uh, Armenians were living there. And this has also a linguistic um, reason. Because in Kurdish, these people would refer to falakh, which is a, like a more broad uh, word, actually referring to peasant, to settled peasant. But in the, uh, this specific Kurdish context, they refer to non-Muslims. So when they use the word falakh, papiri falakh means like the one who's um, whose mother was um, a, a Christian or non-Muslim, 
This encompasses all non-Muslim groups, starting from Yezidi to, uh, over Armenian to Syriacs. And now these people, most of them, as, as a result of the 80s and the language politics, have adopted now or were forced to adopt Turkish as their primary language, and now they translate directly Falakh to Armenian. That's an interesting thing, and which, of course, um, is, um, of, um, makes it critically different to reconstruct their memory accounts. And this is, I think, also one of the reasons, apart from the lack of research, why we know far less also on the Syriacs and Yezidis, which reside in the Lake Van region. Um, and in particular, I mentioned, I hinted at it, that I was um, interested in how different groups remember. And uh, although this research is not completed yet, the groups I was interested in most can be um, determined according to four dimensions. It was genealogy, locality, ideology, and uh, locality. So I was interested in how different people with different uh, locality-based um, how different locally based collectives remember, for example, is uh, how do Kurds remember who were uh, living in the region and were co uh, cohabitating with Armenians prior to the genocide compared to those who were resettled to the region after uh, World War I or in the, um, in the current like, um, period of World War I. Secondly, uh, I was interested in how different generations remember, like the temporality aspect. Uh, how did, for instance, in particular with the, the, inf the uh, emergence of the PKK movement and their ideology change the way people now re uh, envisage the, um, the uh, past of collective violence. Then uh, related to this, of course, also ideology. How do uh, people who identify as very religious, very religious Muslim remember versus to people who identify as secular. And um, lastly, I was interested in, um, which is very relevant in the Kurdish context, uh, now when we go back, how do different actually uh, people who identify with different tribal affiliations remember? And this role in particular in the Kurdish case um, for my main focus. I think I have to find it here. It's in the first five slides. Yeah? yeah? No, it's here, we have it here. Yeah. Um, I think it's not, even for me, it's not possible to read. My eyes are not the best. I think yours are not better. Uh, so these are different tri uh, like uh, tribal affiliation of Kurdish participants, and the interesting thing, um, which also forms like my last aspect I want to um, discuss with you, is that these different tribes have uh, form cons form different um, primordial national myths, which locate their tribes, interestingly, all outside the Lake Van region. So when we look at these different tribes, for example, apart from the Bajari tribes, which identified as the urban class, Bajar is in Kurdish the city, and it refers to the urban class of Pahesh of Bitlis. We see other tribes like Gibran, um, which were um, dating their, their existence back to Mush. But then we see the Rashman Khan, they were dating their uh, origin back to Erbil, Iraq. Others were dating back to Mosul, Iraq, <laughs> to um, Urfa, again outside the Lake Van region, to Iraq. And interestingly, the um, Terekeme, <coughs> as well as Betka and Shuluk, Shuluk identified as a subtribe of Belek to what is nowadays Armenia. So that was also for me very interesting to conduct interviews and see how Kurds actually remember collective violence in the region of Lake Van, who were themselves also expelled from what is nowadays uh, Armenia, and uh, in particular from the region of Alagias, uh, from, from a village called um, Alakilis, which was re renamed two times. Firstly, in the Soviet period, to Baitar, which was then still a Turkish name, but not uh, but a secular one. And then later on to Hoftun, so it's nowadays Hoftun village in, um, in uh, Shirak province of Armenia. And the second um, group were particularly referring to their homeland as like the uh, Dashte Revan, so the uh, plainlands of Yerevan, which most probably refers then to the Sumalu province or Ararat. And, um, so just to sum up everything, uh, these are tentative hypotheses. Uh, of course, I'm just in the middle of my research, so this is just, um, as I said, like tentative and to be uh, proven after I finish with my uh, fieldwork. Uh, first of all, as I've hinted at, I looked at generation, and what I found very interesting is that um, actually they, we have some reverse um, developments in Armenia and in the uh, Lake Van region. Whereas uh, most of my younger participants in the region of Lake Van uh, actually were more critically uh, addressing the national narrative of, uh, promoted by the Turkish state, most probably also on the influence of the PKK ideology. 
Uh, in Armenia, actually, mostly the older generation, the ones who had coexisted with Muslims in Soviet Armenia, were actually more uh, reconciliatory in the way they addressed um, the Turkish other, in, the, in particular also the Kurdish other, in the collective events. So the older generation was uh, far more stressing also incidents of, um, of rescue by, at the hand of Kurds particularly, Whereas, uh, you, um, I, when I contrasted these with a lot of interviews I conduct with younger people, I felt that these stories were not part of the stories related to the genocide that were passed down to the new generation. Whereas, on the Kurdish side, a lot of the younger people were openly breaking the silence uh, which had been maintained by the previous generation. Uh, which, is, of course, also had uh, the, uh, the um, element of religion is a very important part, whereas most of the elder respondents were identified as uh, identified themselves as more uh, religious uh, in regards to Sunni uh, Islam. The youngest were often very more open in addressing topics like uh, the reason religious uh, local leaders like imams played in the way they issued fatwas, uh, which um, which uh, also incited the local population to engage in the killings. And what I found even more important. They were also openly addressing the issue of uh, economic uh, considerations, uh, economic uh, like the killing of Armenians or of, of non-Muslim populations during the chaotic period of the genocide for economic personal gains, which is I think one of the most sensitive issues to address if your the, your very same forefathers are involved in this. So, um, and this I actually assign to what I. Um, uh, call a kind of conflicting memory politics or room of conflicting memory politics in the region of Lake Van. We have a region where actually like both the, uh, the ideology of the Kurdish national movement and that of the Turkish one um, co uh, kind of collides. And the interesting thing is that um, when you compare the, uh, a lot of the um, accounts which were provided by Kurdish um, respondents in the region with even that uh, by the Kurdish national movement based on the publications of Abdullah Öcalan, you can see that they even go further than actually the Kurdish movement, which, uh, which is interesting because the Kurdish national movement actually acknowledges uh, the genocide, but it is not very willing in acknowledging Ishtirak, like the participation of local Kurds or the agency also, the local agency in the killing. So the interesting thing is that people, a lot of people which participate in my research, in particular from uh, in, in the Kurdish areas, were actually also very much self-critical in the way that they really critically also discussed the question of local agency also of, um, of Kurdish tribes and also the, uh, the Kurdish urban populations in the killings. And um, last but not least, an interesting aspect also is the way how memory aggregates. We talk about events that happened now 101 years ago. So the interesting thing is that nowadays in the way people recollect the past, which is actually not accessible to them anymore. We, I mean, we speak about like three, four generations. Uh, the interesting thing is that the current events of violence, uh, which people um, experience, now form uh, actually the background against which like these older um, experiences of violence are constructed uh, or are projected towards. Which means that actually in a more specific sense, in particular the uh, civil, ongoing civil war in the Kurdish region, forms actually the mold in which Kurds actually also try to re envisage collective violence perpetrated against Armenians 100 years ago. Whereas in, on the Armenian side in particular, I mean I conducted my interview not in the diaspora but in the Republic of Armenia, in particular Stalinist repressions and the um, oppression during the Soviet period formed a particular like framework in which people actually re um, recollected uh, violence of the genocide. So it was very interesting how people were drawing lines of continuity be between the uh, violence they endured at the end of the Ottoman Empire and violence they endured during the uh, Stalinist period. And uh, just uh, I want to um, end my talk with uh, just a brief um, remark on like the kind of like possibility of social impact of research, which I, is, I think in particular in this regard, in regard of like contemporary history research, very important. And uh, together with a local philosophy teacher at a boarding school in Mann, we started to initiate a, like a local workshop with young uh, children. They are all children from villages of Van, from actually families uh, from very, very decent background who are living in villages around the Lake Van region. And the interesting thing is that they are, of course, all living in villages which are like um, 
full of a history that tells the history of different people, that tells the history of Armenians, the history of Syriacs. And what we try is to understand uh, what parts of their local memory is actually still passed on in these villages, which is very important because these children are coming from very impoverished families. They are actually also uh, very unaware due to the silence which had been maintained by the Turkish state for so long. So the interesting thing is actually also to show them how multifaceted and how multilayered the past of their own villages is, a past they might themselves be not aware of. So this is like uh, the kind of like, how can we say, like the more active uh, part of my research beyond academia. So thanks a lot for your attention. Yeah.